following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is the Players Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Nui Scruggs. It is Monday, and we are Monday morning because the Cowboys took the L, a large L, to a team that is not a good team. The Washington Football Club takes down the Cowboys. Woo, 25 to 3. I'm doing Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, joined by Barry Church and our friend Danny McRae. They're both former Dallas Cowboys players. All right, fellas, let's hop right to it. I'm just going to give you the floor, McRae. Your thoughts on what happened? <sighs> Listen, I don't, I, re- I don't really have many words for it except, man, was I wrong. I was right about thinking that the Cowboys were going to lose, but I thought that if the game plan focused on 21 and you got 19 in the ball, that we somehow had a chance to win. And that was not the case. I, I said it at the beginning of the game. Wow, they are really featuring Zeke and they're featuring 19 in the running game. And uh, it didn't work. You know, I, I was surprised to see how many carries uh, Tom, Tony Pollard got. It felt like they were kind of splitting carries. So I'm a little worried for Zeke, but we'll get about that, uh, get into that later in the show. But yeah, that's all I got to say, man. I'm not surprised we lost in, in, in the showing that we put out there. That's what we've been seeing all season. Is it, is it my turn yet? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, where do, where, where do I begin, man? Where, I mean, my heart, my heart let me down once again. Um, And I just don't even know where to go right here. I mean, like you said, we tried to get 19 the ball and we got 21 the ball, which I was saying all last week. Man, if we just feature him, if we feature him, we'll give this offense a chance. But it seems like unless you're Barry Sanders back there, you ain't going to get yards behind this offensive line. So. I just I don't know where to turn to. I mean, they made that Washington secondary. The three, the three, one of the, we got three of the top ten receivers in the game, I think. And we made that Washington secondary look like the Legion of Boom. I mean, we couldn't get no separation. Gallup held catchless. CD Lamb held catchless. I mean, they were flipping the receivers all over the place. I mean, it it, it was a travesty out there. And and that's not and, and that's not even starting on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, we we made a team with the they haven't scored three touchdowns all season, and they went out there and got twenty two <laughs> points in the first half. I, they made they made Gibson out there look like Booby Miles from the you know from Friday Night Lights. I mean, he was <laughs> doing everybody dirty out there. He was running through tackles, stiff arming guys left and right. I mean, you, you thought he was AP in his, in his prime. I mean, it, it, it was ridiculous out there. Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas is a former quarterback at Virginia Tech who probably ran a 4-9 at the fastest. Nobody could hang with him. No, he was catching over <laughs> Anthony Brown. He was catch, catching over Jalen Smith. He caught a pass and twinkle toed into the end zone. This is a guy that played quarterback, and he's out here looking like the next coming of Jason Witten. I mean, too many times we've heard this year the, on the broadcast, guys saying, man, he's having a career year or he's having a career game. I mean, season high, he, season high, season high. He's doing whatever he <laughs> wants to do out there. Uh, it's 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 ridiculous. And it's just a part of the broadcast now. I mean, you, you just you just pick them. Who's going to have a career day? If you're going against the Cowboys defensive fantasy, my boy McCray said this yesterday in a text chain. Play whoever you can. Play every tight end. Play every <laughs> running back. Play every receiver. Whatever you can against this Dallas defense, you're guaranteed at least double digit points. It was a it was a bad showing, and we've seen this defense. We've seen this team get trounced early. But for me, this this just looked ten times worse because it was against one of the worst offenses in the nfl and once again we made this team look like it was the next coming of you know the st louis rams back in 99 so for me i i don't know where to start but this was tough this was a tough pill to swallow don't 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 forget about how uninspired they looked all right you know because 88 was out there dropping passes Zeke getting hit on the back shoulder by Andy Dolan for interceptions. Oh. You know, we still getting ran by on defense uh, by McLaurin. And, and the speedster on the team that everybody knows is going to go deep, get ran straight by. You know, it's just uninspired. It's, it's, it's nothing. And he was out there talking like, trash. <laughs> they, he had to, the, the, to talk trash. The, game, the, the play before and the next play, he got ran.
ran smooth by out really? there stumbling uh, and bumbling while the guy's running in the end zone. Uh, <laughs> This is this is ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Who, 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 the uh, anonymous was was absolutely correct, by the way. Uh, e- even though he probably shouldn't have did it and been anonymous, <laughs> they were ab- abs- absolutely correct. <laughs> this, this is, anonymous this, over this, there. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, whoever whoever doing the pre whoever doing the post game was just you know had a good you know hey hi what's going on guys whoever that guy was that's anonymous that's the guy that's just <laughs> and letting everything out because he he was he was dead on with this one he was dead on. Yeah. It was two. It was it was two of them. Now remember, it was two anonymous sources. So it was two sources. Mm, mm, yes, mm. they hit on. Uh, Church to to back up what you said. I started Terry McLaurin in my fantasy team yesterday. So yeah. Oh, I started. You, had, you I, had a good day. I started. I Gibson. had a good day with Gibson back there. I mean, he, he had Booby Miles back there. So. I mean, if you want to spin, just let him. You know I mean, it, it was bad. Nah, but, it was bad. but listen, but listen. Uh, unfortunately, I started Zeke. <laughs> he gave me six. Oh. So I mean, oh. it, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking to trade all my Cowboys <laughs> players. <laughs> mm. Um, mm, mm. Yeah. See, see I, I picked Christian Kirk up the week before. Did did well, and and I'm literally shopping the wire this week to see what Eagles I can get. I think I can get Greg Ward Jr. So I'll probably pick up Greg Ward Jr. And then after that, I've got James Conner, and I'll probably pick up Eric Ebron as well. I mean, look, if you are a fantasy football and you see the Cowboys on the schedule, you need to pick up, you know, those guys because we are seeing – look, I mean, let's just be honest here. Okay, the Cowboys are dead last in points allowed. They allow 34.7 a game. So when they're giving up 34.7 a game, you would be very wise if you're playing fantasy football or that daily fantasy football to figure out who the Cowboys are playing and go get some of that action. And then when it comes against the run, the Cowboys are last in the NFL. They give up 178.3 yards on the ground. Do you know how I mean, – they're teams that don't do that in college, okay? I mean, 178. And what did they uh. give up yesterday? 203 yards, man. Oh, my bad. Two to all, all running backs. All oh, running backs. Oh. Everybody that was in the game. Mm. Because, I mean, Nui, it, Nui, 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 you, you texted me at the beginning of the game and thought it was going to be the Peyton Barber show. We was like, he, he running too good for them to take him out. And right? then Gibson came with a 40-yard run. Gibson, you mean, you mean Jim Brown? You mean Jim Brown? That's what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> It was just so, I mean, the way Kyle Allen was sitting back there in that pocket, I mean, he could have did whatever he wanted. He could have filed his taxes back there. I mean, if, you, if you're a guy back there and you got that much time, I mean, Ben DiNucci could have went back there and diced up our defense if he had that much time. I mean, it was, it, we, got, we struggling, guys. We struggling hey, listen, bad, man. Church. And church, listen, I, and, and I'm going to admit this, man. I should have stuck with my first mind. We all talked about, you know, the D line was supposed to be great and be able to rush the passer, and then Alden Smith came out the first week and was out playing D long. We was like, oh, this dude finna have a heck of a season, maybe double digit sacks. Oh no, we in trouble. I, I should have stuck with my first mind. They everybody looked like they've been off for five years. Everybody on our defensive line looked like they have been off for the last five years and, and not able to get any pressure on anybody, no matter who they going against. It just looks like we cannot win and we cannot create enough pressure to cause any turnovers or get any sacks. Any real meaningful sacks. So uh, I, I did a I did a radio interview today with some guys out of Philadelphia and they were talking about first they asked me about Alden Smith and then Randy Gregory. Like, Randy Gregory's good, man. What's, what's going on? I said, he had six naps, man. And then I, I went back to just the conversations <laughs> we've had here on the players' lines. I said, if you're a defensive coordinator, you're not worried about the, these defensive ends because you're running this ball right up the gut because they can't oh, yeah. stop you. And this was another day in which we kept seeing Don Terry Poe get turned around. Every, just push him left, he go left. Push him right, he goes right. I mean, literally. You don't have to worry about throwing the ball. You're running this thing all day long on the Cowboys. And then when you do throw it, you go ahead and you throw it deep over their heads, and you're going to have the ability to strike there. But, but as long as this team is so soft up the middle, whoever you are, your game plan has to be, let's run this ball at 95 and whoever else they want to put out there, be it Antoine Woods, defensive tackle, or Tyrone Crawford. But run the ball between between your guards, and you're going to have – I mean, I saw one guard lock up on, on Jalen Smith, and I'm like, wow. I mean, it's not like these are the – these aren't the hogs that I grew up watching for Washington. These are just some dudes. But – this is the game plan, and we saw it work to perfection for Cleveland for 307 yards. We saw Arizona, whose ground game has been struggling. They came in here, and they tore up the Cowboys. And then Washington did the same thing. 
So your whole you're talking about Alden Smith and and, and Randy Gregory and all. Who cares? You're going right up the middle, and it, it's it's hold tough on. right now. And I don't know how, I don't know how they fix it. Hold on, hold on. Now we, we talked about this last week on the tape. We're not gonna let these defensive ends off the hook, all right? Let me yeah. tell you something. <laughs> Rob, Robert Woods came in here and ran a speed sweep and they ran it down our throat. All right. Odell came around here and did a, a speed reverse and ran it down our throat. Gibson came in here and did the same exact play and went for 40 yards. These defensive ends are also not uh, doing what they're supposed to do on the edges because there's a lot of big plays coming around the corner on them. Yeah, but, I mean, our, but, our whole defense. Our, go ahead, go ahead, Nui, go ahead. But they haven't stopped it. I mean, you, you, yeah, you say that, but, you know, it's been a process they want. So, if, literally, if you're, if you're a coordinator this week, it's in the plan. <laughs> you know, yes. Greg, it's got to be. <laughs> Greg, that's what we're going to pick up Greg Ward Jr. He will get it sheer around the corner. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, this is, <laughs> nobody's setting the edge. You know, you sit there and yell, come in around the corner, come in around the corner. Man, I mean, it is what it is. I'm just, I'm Christian just, Kirk, yeah. around the corner. <laughs> Everybody yeah, around the corner. <laughs> I, and, you know, and at least you, you see a couple play, maybe three plays out of the game where, you know, D-Law or Alden Smith or somebody will make a play against a run. How can these guys continually trot out 95 on the field after the tape they watch? I mean, we all, we all we see the game copy and it's nowhere near as clear or as evident as the, you know, all 22 film that the coaches watch with the players. How are they continually watching this film, watching this guy get pushed back five, six, seven yards from the line of scrimmage? And how do they continually trot him out there like he's like a stalwart or he, you know, our defense is nothing without him. I, you know, I just don't understand it, man, at all. I mean, how can you continue to trot this guy out there when he's continually giving up lane after lane <laughs> after lane? I mean, it, it's embarrassing. I didn't think it could get worse, gentlemen. I, I didn't. I thought when they let go Rod Marinelli and they decided to, to change and, and, and get some bigger guys up front, I thought that was going to be, be, be the way to solve things. And I was wrong. I was wrong. And, and when I look at Don Terry Poe, I simply ask this question. What will it take for them to just say goodbye? There got to be some people sitting at home who will come in here and, and at least give you some effort. Because I don't feel like you're getting effort. And it's not just him. He's not alone. But, but honestly, when you're watching him, you're, you're dead last in run defense. Why do these guys, why do you keep rolling this group of people out here when seemingly they don't care? I say seemingly because that's how it seems. Maybe they do. Yeah. But right now, what I'm seeing here, it's an uninspired effort. And, and you guys played this game and you know what uninspired effort looks like. And that to me is the most damning thing. Because this, is a, this was a one in five football team you face. They outclassed you from the time that football was kicked off. And that's really disappointing. Despite all the injuries and everything else, one thing you can't control, you can't control effort and your ability to actually want to be out there. And it didn't seem like that to a whole lot of Cowboy fans at home. It, yeah, and it, to me it was just, you can tell, it's just a lack, of, a lack of fear out there. I mean, for me to go out there and put out tape like that, I'd be scared I was going to lose my job or the guy behind me, was they were going to start rotating or something. I mean, you just, guys are, are just out there playing like everything's secure and they're taking everything for granted because they know the coaches can't do nothing. Or I, you know, to me, I, if I put that tape out there, you know, I'd, I'd just be embarrassed. I mean, there's, there's, no other, there's no other way around it. You put that tape out there, you're embarrassed. So to me... It's just, it's just guys that, you know, there's no fear. There's no fear of losing jobs. There's no fear or, or holding anybody accountable. And, and it shows on the grass, man, like you said. Church, I need, I need you to take, take a page out of Nui's book, all right, and just do, get out of the denial stage. Get out of the denial stage and accept the fact that we are not a good team, all right? We should be 0-7. That saved us from being that team and, and some, some dumb players from the other teams saved us from being that and he covered up a lot of stuff and he, and he, he enabled us to be able to come back from some of those ugly uh, ugly scores and make it competitive without yeah, him talk, we are not that <laughs> talk about we are back. going up <laughs> oh yeah talk oh yeah about we, who listen. price is going up oh my goodness <laughs> I, I want to know I want to know this I want to know this before we before before we get out of it Nui at church I need you guys to give me what well, Nui probably won't do it who's going to be the first person to be let go from the coaching staff Ooh. 
Who, who, who's, who's going first? Because let me tell you something. I know Steven said he got to give give these guys a chance, and him and him and Jerry are known for you know letting people you know have a little time to get acclimated with with their with their players and players get acclimated with them. I, I I don't see any way that after this year that the coaching staff remains exactly the same. Go go ahead, Nui. You got that. I'm going to look toward the defensive backfield and, and say that's, that's where it goes. Um, the Mike Nolan question is, is going to be very interesting because we know McCarthy's feeling about Mike Nolan, the guy who gave him a shot as a coordinator in the National Football League. And this thing, we all know, that this, is a buddy, this is a buddy system. So and to me, here, and I, I said this on his radio interview in Philadelphia, and I'll say it again here today. After the season, they've got to They've got to ask themselves, well, who are they going to choose? Are they going to choose the coaches or are they going to choose the players? Because if they're going to choose this group of coaches, and you heard Stephen Jones today, all right, we quote what Stephen said. Stephen said, I know we have the right head coach for the job. These things take time. And he also said, I, I think we're going in the right direction. So if you're going to believe in these coaches, <laughs> you're going to have to move these players out because it's clear these players, a lot of these players have not bought in to what they're preaching. So, so that to Go. me is going to be very, very interesting. But if I sit up here and say who's going to be the sacrificial lamb, knowing that McCarthy will want to try to keep knowing, that's probably going to be the defensive backfield coach because you can go find another one of those. That's, that's probably what they'll do. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you I, said I, Steve, Steven said we're going on the, in the right direction? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what he said? Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Well, news to me, but I mean, goodness. All right. I, mean, I didn't know he said that. That was surprising. That was surprising. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Steven, Steven is in, man. I mean, just, just so you know, just so you understand, Steven is in. So, well, so well, listen, they, they say, fooled, they fooled right, you we'll, in church we'll with back. the Kool-Aid. So, so, so they, they, got, they got Steven, too. I'm not surprised. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's, what's, here, here's one of Steven's quotes. Exactly. All right says, I know we've got the right head coach for the job. These things just take time. I know our fans are frustrated. We are certainly understand the criticism that's coming our way, but we've got to go to work. Um, when we come back, okay. all right, when we come back, something that, that somebody posed about Mike McCarthy, uh, I'm going to shoot it down for you. Okay, and that's the job status. I'll shoot it down for you next. You're checking out the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Dewey Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, and alongside two former Dallas Cowboys players, Danny McRae and Barry Church, right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. Hey there, Cowboys fans. With Tide Cleaners at-home pickup and delivery, cleaning your clothes has never been more convenient. Simply sign up at your local store, set out your dirty clothes, and one of our Tide Cleaners professionals will come directly to your home for a totally contactless experience. Your clean garments will be returned promptly the next scheduled delivery day, so skip the errand and enjoy life, not laundry. Visit TideCleaners.com or your local store to sign up for Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery today. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer, where you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses. You can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. To the Players' Lounge. We 
sitting here debating Mary Church's <laughs> bad picks here. About to make me hot, get me off my game. All right, let me read this here. Uh, don't miss your chance to get tickets to see the Cowboys at AT&T Stadium this season with home matchups remaining against the Steelers, Washington 49ers, and Eagles. A limited number of tickets are on sale. Now get yours today at DallasCowboys.com slash tickets. So, Steelers, Washington 49ers, and Eagles. Ooh, boy, okay. That's mm. not going to be an easy slate of games there at all. Okay, so, no, so let, before, before we get back into the Cowboys, let me address what I was talking about during, during the break here. I was getting slow to this. I let Barry Church make my picks in the Dallas Morning News this week. Okay, So every week I make picks. I do picks straight, and I do picks against the line. Barry, right now, against the spread, you are 3-10. We ain't talking about the spread, though. <laughs> you, you know, it was, that was never part of the system. It was no, always it was W's and L's. These, these are these. You take we gotta take the whole thing. So W's and L's, you're five and eight. You ruining my five record, and eight, man. <laughs> yes, you are five, five and eight. eight. But we talk, but we ain't even got the Monday night yet. You know what I'm saying? We we still. But you, Louis, but you wouldn't take those odds in Vegas. No, these are losing odds, bro. <laughs> you wouldn't. Oh, yeah. You gotta lose your house. <laughs> no. You gotta lose your house doing this, man. <laughs> okay, so you were you were wrong, you were wrong on the Cowboys. Okay, we told you not to take the Cowboys. You're wrong on the Cowboys. Okay, you right. You got Philly. You got Philly right. You lost the Atlanta game as Detroit scored the last second. You won the Buffalo game. You lost the Cincinnati game as Baker Mayfield had five touchdown passes. You bet on Houston to win instead of the Packers. You took Kansas City. You won there. You won against uh, the Chargers main, mainly because it was you, your vindictive and pettiness against your old team, Jacksonville. You lost betting on New England. talking about the, the Jags out there? Ain't nobody yeah, worried the about Jag- the Jags out yeah, there. Yeah, the Jags <laughs> lost the Chargers, so you got that right. You lost New England. Um, you, you won with, with New Orleans. You lost with Tennessee. You lost with Seattle. You lost with Vegas, <laughs> man. Those are the wins. Lost everything. Those are just the abstract <laughs> wins, it. man. Hey, I'm gonna take my lumps like that. a man. You know, you know, I'm gonna let y'all, y'all got it. This is y'all day. I'm gonna take my lumps like a man. But I, st- I still got faith in my boys to win this NFC who? East. Though I'll tell you that. Who? I still got the faith. Cowboys. Yeah, that's what I'm Church. talking about, man. You, you know who I'm Church. talking about. Church. Look, man. Until we retire, are out of it, retire your name. Retire until we your are name, out bro. of it completely, I still got they back, man. I'm, I'm still retire I'm still your here. name. I'm still you here, long, man. I gotta go down you, with you the ship. You cannot call yourself Nostradamus anymore. My, no. Until until we're mathematically out, until it's over with, I still got a chance, man. We still we Church. still got a chance. We Church. still got the a cow- chance, man. The Cowboys are now the get right game, okay? The get right game. In college football, <laughs> it's called the homecoming game. That's who the Cowboys. That's are. how you gonna do us, dude. <laughs> You gonna say we the? Uh, that's how you that's gonna what do it's it. Been. Get right. It's that's the get right been. game. Okay, man. I, I, you, you talking about this, this, this is where, where the big schools give the little schools like a couple mil to play them? Is that what you call it? <laughs> oh man. When, when the Cowboys come to town, it? everybody getting right. Look at Antonio Gibson. Got right, didn't he? Antonio got, got right, didn't he? Uh huh. Kyle Allen he did. got right. He got did. his first. Got his. Okay. Got, you know, got you know, okay. Look, this is what the Cowboys have become. Odell Beckham Jr. Hello. They were talking about trade. They were talking about trading Odell Beckham Jr. Then he came, <laughs> faced the Cowboys, <laughs> looked like a Pro Bowler, and everybody loved him again. I mean, this is what they've become. Christian Kirk hadn't done anything all year. I picked him up fantasy football, man. He played the Cowboys, do run well out here, <laughs> and put up put up numbers, man. Kenyon Drake, here's a guy that was, wasn't doing anything. Okay, he was losing snaps to Chase Edmonds. Rose up a buck sixty four on the ground. This is what the Cowboys are. When you allow. 34.7 points a game, and you allow 178 yards of rushing per contest, other teams are getting right against you. They're scoring. They're running at will. Here's another thing. Don't forget about the Cowboys defense. Today. Oh, oh, I was just saying. The, yeah, what the, oh, I, I kept talking about here with, with this club is what, what are some of the things they can't do? You know, offensively, they can't. I mean, defensively, they can't get anybody off the field on third down. Washington was 9-15 and 15 on third down. Man, we're talking about Washington, man. I talk about Patrick Mahomes. I talk about Lamar Jackson and Baltimore. I talk about Washington, man. The team with no nickname. They go nine to fifteen on third down. We talk about time I understand, of possession. Man. Time of possession, all right? Hey, how does your offense help your defense? Time of possession. Do you know Washington had the ball twelve minutes longer? Your defense was on the field for almost a full quarter. 
Barry, this D's not good enough to be on the football field for over Look, 30 minutes, much Look, less man, you throw right. on the field for 36 minutes. And you go sit up right. and tell us you believe? Man, put that narcotic Look, man. down. Hold I got off that blue drink. I got off that blue drink. I got off that blue drink. I get off. I give it to y'all. Y'all right. Right now, we're not playing winning formula. We, we we turning the ball over. We ain't got time of possession. Our defense is looking god awful right now. But you know, but I Obviously. still got to stick with the ship because we're only a half game out of first place. I still got to stick with the ship unless we go out there and we put you know no disrespect, but if we go out there with Danucci at quarterback, I'm off. I mean, y'all got to give me a reprieve on that one. If, if no. that's if that's what we're going for, uh, I got to get a reprieve. That, Part of the game. Hey, come no on, man. Nah, no, man. We got- There's no qualifiers <laughs> here, man. There's no qualifiers. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all gonna give your boy a reprieve if they go no. out there no. with Ben DiNucci? L- listen, Look listen, at what- Nui, How many turnovers did we have uh, this week? One. So when you talk about get, because when you talk about get right, I want to make sure you talk about the defense too. Because if you got a defense that's going up against the Cowboys, you need to start them as well. Because they're going to get some turnovers, they're going to get some sacks, and, they, and the Cowboys not putting up no points with Andy Dalton out there, and definitely not with Danucci. So this is, this is an all-around get-right game. We did see something good from special teams with Tony Pollard getting a long return, but that is few and far between this season. This is an all-around get-right game. Start them against the Cowboys if you got them until they show something different. Cowboys offense I still got faith, six man. Sacks. Six sacks. I, and still, I, know I still got faith. In what? Where? Uh, we Where? Going. Tell we, me it, what. Oh, in the NFC, in the NFC crown, man. That's it. We only a half game out. We only get half game out. Let me tell you something. Ed Church, that, that was that was one of the shortest games that I've ever watched. Is when I I was at the store at like two forty five and the game was over. I, I felt like they had a running clock. They get they had mercy on us. That's that's what Washington did. So we supposed to control the clock. <laughs> we lost in every aspect of the game. Everyone. <laughs> Y'all right? I mean, I can't even I can't even say nothing today because y'all told me previously. Y'all, they had Chase Young, they got Kerrigan, they got you know Allen, they got Sweat, they got those boys, and yeah. I didn't listen. You know, I played with yeah. my heart. I didn't listen. So y'all were right. Y'all got it. I'm gonna give y'all y'all day. Y'all got this day, but I've still got faith. And when we come back, just you know, I'm gonna have my day. We Don't go, worry about we it. We telling you Don't the same thing Sunday. We go. We gonna tell you the same thing Sunday night. All right. We gonna tell you the exact same thing. <laughs> So, Mm-mm. so get get ready Mm-mm. for it. Uh, we gonna be we, we play good on prime time. We play good on prime time, man. So I ain't worried about okay. it. I ain't worried about it, man. I ain't worried. All right. All right. Here, here's more from Stephen Jones, and, and uh, he said, "Quote." You're going to watch a team evolve over time. Mike McCarthy has proven that he could do it year in and year out. I'm not sticking my head in the sand. I understand there's going to be frustration. We deserve criticism, but I think this will evolve. Steven also yep. said, I just think you're going to take your lumps with a new staff. And then he said, I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, he also said, I do believe we have the right uh, right kind of guys. I know we have the right head coach for the job. Things just take time. And Hold on. When it can't, yeah. Go Sound like uh, he's go going ahead. with the go coaches. Ahead, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. No, my no, bad. No, you can finish. No, no, I thought no, you were that, done. That, no, no that, that, that's a good stopping place, but go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. I think Matt LaFleur, his first year with Green Bay was last year. Did they go yes. to the playoffs? How they yeah, look? Okay, right about that. I'm looking right at Carolina. Uh, they got a new staff this year. The are they doing okay? They doing better than us? Yeah, and they and they don't yes. have McCaffrey. They got a new quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. Okay, I think they doing all right. What about Washington? They just got that staff. They can't figure out who their quarterback is. Did we go up there and play them? Oh man, they made us look like straight garbage. The Texans oftentimes look better than us, and they fired their coach in the middle of the season. So I don't want to. I like. Listen, all right. I understand. You know, don't forget the new Cleveland. Staff sometimes it, Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland as well. Sometimes it takes time, but to look this bad, is it says a lot. Like, all right, yeah, and you might take some lumps and feel that way, whatever. But to look this bad and have your players look like they're not really playing for you and uninspired and not hustling, and then coming out in the news and saying we don't need to hustle and then leaking out stuff anonymously. This is, you know, this is way past uh, new staff. Look, all those teams you, you named have one thing in common, man. They all have their quarterback. They all got that guy, their leader. We, Washington we is right now. <laughs> well, all besides, well, okay, I'll give you Washington. Well, they never had one to begin <laughs> with, you know. I, but anyway, I'm gonna say this, man. Church. We don't have our guy right now due to Church, injuries. Man. But I, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> with. Look, Stephen. Stephen knows what he's talking about, man. Look, we got a chance. 
We got it. We only a half okay. game out, man. Until it's over, yeah, we, we, I'm gonna keep riding that ship. <laughs> all right. Until it's we over, we got a chance I'm to go riding. two and fourteen. I'm gonna go down with the ship unless they put. The Nucci out there, then I gotta y'all gotta say y'all gotta throw me a life vest or something. Hey, y'all gotta give me that's, something. Oh, that that's the thing that's gonna stop it. Okay, Danucci. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm grasping on strings right here, man. Throw me a lifeline, man. Gee. No, no we, we're telling you to go ahead, church, and, and come on in. Bring your ship on. Nah, in, I can't do okay? it. Because you gotta take Don him Terry, like a man. Can't do it. Don Terry Don Terry Poe's still out there. Okay, he's still out there. And I don't this know thing how. Is not, this thing's not going to get fixed. And, and I had a couple of people on my timeline talk about trade for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And then a buddy of mine who's the main sports guy in, in, in New, NBC New Orleans like, yeah, man, um, I'm here, Jameis Winston. Make the Cowboys give you a three. I'm like, three? Let's stop this. At this point in time, the way the Cowboys are going is a top ten draft pick. You want to be able to draft in the top ten in every single round. You're not giving it up for Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick cannot save this football team. They're not one player away. This isn't when they thought they had, hey, let's go get Brandon Whedon or Matt Castle because Romo went down and we just need somebody to win us some games and then Romo could come in here and save us. This is not that kind of situation. They are weak up front on the offensive line and the defensive line. They're not good in the trenches. That's where football games are won. They're also not good in the defensive backfield. We also have people, as, as Danny McCray said, the anonymous sources were right. Okay, what the anonymous sources said <laughs> clearly all came true. So if the ship is sinking now and it's just Washington, what happens for the next when they when they face Philadelphia, when they face Pittsburgh, when they face Baltimore? They're, none of these things are easy. I don't know if the Cowboys are going to be favored in another football game. And I heard somebody say, well, we got Cincinnati. I'm like, shoo. Cincinnati almost they beat Cleveland good. yesterday. Yeah, right. you they can't sleep on Cleveland. Cincinnati. And um, no, Cincinnati is not some W. Cincinnati, they're going to be, they will be at minimum a three point dog just because it's Joe Burrow, rookie of the year. Jo- jo- Joe yeah, Burrow is going, is going up for rookie of the year. He threw for 403 tugs yesterday, I believe, and he's on pace to go for almost 4,000 yards. So, I mean, d- listen, when I was second there, you can't count Cincinnati out at all. As a matter of fact, Cincinnati should be counting us out. Hey, they about to get right. I, they go get I'm right. Look, uh, a lot is going to come down to this to this Sunday night game against Philly, man, for a lot of reasons. One, it's a must win. Two, a lot of cats are going to be fighting for the jobs. Because I'll tell you one thing, when we played, you know, with the Cowboys, is the Jones, they don't like to get embarrassed on prime time. So Sunday night, if we go out there and, and get embarrassed like we did against Washington or embarrassed like we did all against the season, so somebody gone, man. Somebody got to go. So I'm telling this game coming up is going to be huge on multiple aspects. Because, I mean, Cats is going to be playing for their job if they go out there and get embarrassed. It sounds like you're picking the Cowboys on, on Monday. <laughs> you damn right. I told you I'm going down. Man. If I'm going down with this shit, I'm going down. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we got this, though. We got this. We got this. When we come back, a lot of people are talking about that hit that Bostic, John Bostic, laid on Andy Dalton and the Cowboys' response. Let's dive into that next you are checking out the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm a longtime Cowboys reporter, Newey Scruggs, joined by two former Dallas Cowboys players, Barry Church and Danny McCray, right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor! Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. To Dallas' frontline responders, thank you. To show its gratitude, Tide is offering free laundry services in Dallas to the families of frontline responders. Simply bring your laundry and your identification to Tide Cleaners and they will wash it within two days. One thing less for you to worry about. While you take care of us all, Tide will take care of the laundry for the families of frontline responders. To learn more, 
and find a location near you. Visit hope.tidecleaners.com. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. To the Players' Lounge. All right, coming to a Cowboys game this season, make sure you know before you go, wear a mask, keep distance, and be prepared for cashless transactions. Be aware of all safe stadium policies prior to arriving to AT&T Stadium. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash safe stadium for details. Cowboys will be on the road. They're going to Philadelphia for NBC's Sunday night football. Cowboys now 2-5. and five. They get beat handily at Washington. Philadelphia, a lot better football team. They may not have Andy Dalton at quarterback. Reason why, Andy Dalton attempted to slide down. John Bostic of Washington dove headfirst and knocked Andy Dalton out of the game, knocked his helmet off, and after it happened, no one came to the aid of Andy Dalton in terms of hitting John Bostic, pushing him, nothing. Everybody just sat there and watched. And uh, somebody sent me a clip of Steve Young scoring a touchdown. And he scored against another team, and he got hit while he was in the end zone. And, man, there was a big melee that happened after that. People sitting there trying to fight. To see the reaction of the Cowboys players, even Mike McCarthy called it out. Even he was like, yeah, it's kind of not what we want. That's me, reporter, sitting here saying it, okay? Or me at my SWBC Mortgage Home Studio saying, that didn't look good. You guys have been in the locker room. Was the response weak by the Cowboys? McCray? Uh, a- absolutely. Yeah, but I, th- I think what, what goes with that is, you know, you, you got a whole replacement offensive line in there. You know, if you had Tyron Smith out there, uh, you know, uh, Collins and, and Zach Martin and those guys, I think that response would have been a little different. I think the most glaring one to me, and I hate to get back on this dude again, was my guy 19, who had been fed it. the ball. He got <laughs> fed the ball all day. And I saw him, the, the clip that they showed, that's all I had. The clip that they showed was him looking at the dude, you know what I'm saying, like he was on Friday, and it was like, damn. I'm like, bro, bro, go pick him up. Go put somebody. Go do something. It, look, it looks bad. It looks bad. I know y'all were in shock, and y'all were like, is he okay? But at this point, like something should snap in and be like, man, let me go take care of him. Uh, because if that was that, wow. I'm sure that, that I'm sure the response would have been a little different. So it just Andy Dalton should feel a little bad that they didn't have his back. But hopefully, you know, uh, you know, they, they talk to him and and tell him that they messed up and, and they have his back from, uh, from here moving forward. No, well, we're going to fight it when Debo knocked out the boy because he wanted his bike back and the guy's dad was like, yeah. well, I told you about coming down here and messing with these people. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you you want some too? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dad, Co- yeah, get- Mark Cooper, Andy, I told you to stop coming down here and messing with these people. <laughs> <laughs> just, just bad. It was bad. It's a bad look. It's a bad look. Hey, but, it is, but, man. Hey, McCray, man. You, but, but church, McCray, you are. Church, you going to sit up here? Hunt- really, church. Church, he's sitting here what? telling you all this, and you still riding? You still drinking that narcotic? I got to go. I got to go down with the ship, man. I got to go down swinging. So I got to stick with my boys. But McCray was 100 percent right, man. Like, yeah, it was a, it was super weak, you know, for those guys not to even, you know, put a hand on my guy or something, give him an elbow or something to get him out the way. But like he said, I mean, this isn't, you know, Tyron Smith, you know, Frederick. This ain't Zach Martin. And for sure, it's not Lyle Collins. I believe Lyle would have been over there scrapping as soon as that would have happened. But these are guys, you know, doing their, what, fifth and sixth, you know, start of their their career. I mean, they're just trying to figure out how to block a TE stunt or, you know what I'm saying, something like that. So they don't know really what's going on out there. And that's when you have your veteran kind of go out there and show you the ropes. And I'm sure if there was a veteran guy out there with them, he would have sparked it off and they might have followed up. But wait, um, they just didn't wait, have any, wait, wait. they didn't have anybody out there to show them the ropes, man. So they you know, they kind of checked on the quarterback and, and, and let it ride like that. But, you know, hey, it, was, it was super weak, though. What's happening? Church, can I give you a name? Connor Williams, yeah. a three year veteran. Connor Williams, three year veteran starter. He do anything? Oh, man. Connor Williams. We, oh, I ain't. I ain't even gonna get started on him, man. Church, I, I you, 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 my you, guy you looks like a, said, he looks like a wide receiver at said, the offensive line. 
No, but you I just can't. said if there I was can't. a you just said if there was a veteran out there, there was a veteran out there. Man, he ain't. A, he started. Hey. How many? He started what last year? That was it. <laughs> he don't, started. Don't three forget, years now, bro. This is year number three. Started. He he was starting all three years. Yes. Connor, man, I must have some man. I must be thinking of somebody. <laughs> I'll bet. That's how that tells you how much he did on the offensive line. Then don't forget they was getting abused all day too. So they pride was taken away from him uh, well well before Andy Dalton got hit. So it was a lot of stuff they, going on with them, and they trying to figure it out, and they were getting you know getting ran through, and you know we got out physical, and you know it, it was a lot going on. But you know to, to say, it, listen, I tell you this. This is when you miss a guy like Sean Lee, like like Church said, without a veteran out there. I remember when uh, Demarcus Ware got cut on punt safe, and Sean Lee went. He was out there on the field, and he was practically fighting the guy that, that uh, cut uh, Demarcus Ware. So you know, yeah. th- those are the, those are the type of things that you need out there, and that comes for some of your veteran players. But you know, when you're down in the dumps like that, and you already got your head hanging, you know, you, that that type of stuff happens. So, so McCray did did Washington's D line did they take the heart and they take the soul of this offensive line on Sunday? Uh, a- absolutely. Well, listen, I, I believe so, and uh, you know, and that leads me into my, my worry for Zeke. You know, because you know we saw Zeke get 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 hit by Aaron Donald, and then this week we saw him get hit by. By the linebacker, Ooh. the same, the, the, the same hit, linebacker he got ran through. Yeah, the same linebacker catches a pick off his deflected pass. I'm really worried for for Zeke's future. Uh, you know, with us, you know, because like I said, he's making 90 mil. He's splitting carries. He looks bad out there, and then you know, all this stuff is starting to glare. And I'm just wondering, you know, what what Mike McCarthy has for him in his future, especially with us passing the ball so much and having all these receivers. Where does the run game fit in? Because it hasn't been, you know, there besides, you know, that going down and us having to lean on it. But that wasn't a focal point of ours, in, you know, in the beginning. So I'm worried. Woo! <coughs> Ooh, brother, that's a, let me sip this tea because that's a, ooh, that's a loaded question right there now. Mm-mm. <laughs> It's, it's, it's scaring me. It's scaring me, man. It's scaring me. It's scaring me. Like it e- e- even even when they drafted uh, C D Lamb, it was like, listen, it's only one ball, right? So you either gonna focus on the run or you gonna become an air raid offense. And then that's when we thought that Zeke was gonna be out there running uh, pass routes, right. and we hadn't seen that, right? And they just been focusing on uh, on the pass. So I'm not saying Zeke can't do it. I'm just worried about where he fits in, you know, with the play calling and, and where the offensive philosophy is headed. Mm. Mm, mm. I, I can't disagree with you and, and when you talk about allocating those dollars normally you're thinking if you're going to allocate that much money to the running back then you're not going to put it towards you know the receivers and the quarterback and so in a lot of ways they're trying to have everything they can and have this fantasy football team and they've neglected their defense and, and a lot of that has come home and it's hurt them I mean one of the choices they had clearly was Amari Cooper the wide receiver or Byron Jones the corner and they chose the wide receiver and they didn't fill the corner spot and they just didn't do it and and it's biting them so um, where they go forward that's what I say they've got to ask themselves are they going to pick these coaches after the season or are they going to pick these players because they've got to go with one or the other because these coaches have different like ideas the coaches have from, different from, ideas right now about using these guys from yeah, my from bad, Louis, but it sounds like from from uh from what Stephen James Stephen Jones, I mean, he's been saying in these quotes, it sounds like he's leaning towards the coaches. I mean, you got him here saying, you know, well, you know, these things take times, and you know, we're, we got to take our lumps with this. We got a new coach and staff; these things take time. So it kind of sounds like he's leaning towards the coaches, and you know, I you know, I don't know what that means for these players in these high contracts, but something's got to give. I mean, you can't you can't roll over next year, especially if the cap lowers. I mean, you can't roll over next year with all these high priced guys underachieving. It's October, okay. So it's easy to sit up here and say something. It's October. Um, let's see after Sunday Night Football on national TV how they look. Let's see after they face the Steelers and they face Baltimore and you face the 49ers. I mean, let's see. You know, you end up here at 2-14. and 14. I, I don't care how many, you know, injuries, whatnot. To be at 2-14 and 14 in the kind of effort we're seeing, if we continue to see this effort where we just question these guys, I mean, already they're going to be question marks within this locker room, and I'm sure they were when they got on the plane. Hey, man. Andy Dalton got knocked in the smithereens next week against Washington, and we didn't do nothing. You know, what yep. are you going to do with Fletcher Co- when Fletcher Cox lay up on somebody? I mean, you know, this is, not, I mean, and other, <laughs> other defenses see this like, oh, man, you know, what, I mean, Calais Campbell and the, the, the Baltimore, I mean, they're coming here, man. The Steelers, man, they're getting these guys. I mean, 
This thing can get bad. So while Stephen can sit up here and say, hey, man, we have confidence right now. Yeah, it's easy to say in October. Let these let these losses start piling up. And and, and then uh, you'll see where you're at here. It ain't going to happen, no. though. Nui, I'm going to challenge you on this one, too, because I want to know, do you still feel like the next big cornerback contract is coming from number 27? No! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, because this, 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 is, this, is one, this, this is one of the most more obvious times of when a guy slips to the second round and everybody's like, man, I didn't think he was going to be there. And then you start watching the film and you're like, man, they must have saw it. Like, everybody saw the same thing. You know, I think he can get a lot better. But knew he put the pressure on him to say that he's going to be the next guy to get paid, you know, the big bucks. And uh, I know it's only October, but goodness gracious, he's a fighter. Man. But he's giving up some uh, huge plays. Some humongous <laughs> play. And, it, and, and the technique just looks just god awful. <laughs> I mean, I got on Worley the other day for being in cover three and sitting on a route. I mean, my guy's going against their fastest and best receiver in Terry McLaurin. And he's just sitting down like like he got all the makeup speed in the world. Like you you going against one of the fastest receivers in the league, and you're sitting on a route and man to man coverage with no safety help. I mean, Nick it, Saban. it, Nick it Saban. just doesn't Coach make any up. sense, man. <laughs> Coach and then all you see afterwards, all you see afterwards is ah man, I could have had that one, man. <laughs> I'm gonna get him next time though. I'm gonna get him. I mean, it's just every week, every week. We're going to have to leave it there, gentlemen. It is 15 past the hour. Another fast-paced edition of the Players' Lounge. I'm Nui Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter. Joined by, as always, former Cowboys safeties Barry Church and Danny McRae. We're back tomorrow at 2.30. We'll dive even more into the Cowboys as we, they try to recover from this Washington loss. And let's see who they can actually put on the field for Sunday Night Football when they face the Philadelphia Eagles. For our producer, Chris Beam, and everybody a part of the show, we appreciate you checking out the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. Still got a chance, baby. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!